Hi friends, David here from Learn Christmas Lighting, and in this video we're going to take an overview, uh, not going into the, the fine details, but showing you, giving you the concepts of how smart receivers work in Christmas lighting. Let's dive in. We're going to go on a little history lesson, a little story time to get started so that you can understand the background, understand how we got to where we are today, so that it makes sense uh, what we're doing here, because or else you might be like, what's a smart receiver? Why do I care? Right? Uh, so back in the old days, AKA like five years ago, maybe four years ago, um, we had controllers come out, uh, most notably the Falcon F48, which I'm pointing to one because I thought it was outside earlier. Turns out it's right on my floor underneath the camera. Um, and uh, the Falcon F48 uh, expansion boards for the Falcon F16s and and these had something fairly new in them to the hobby, which was what were called differential receivers. Okay, that sounds complicated. It doesn't have to be. What that meant is that out of the controller, on, on the face of the controller, there are RJ45 jacks for Ethernet cables. Okay, now these ones for your long range receiver ports do not plug into networking equipment. They don't plug into routers or network switches or the network ports on your controller, but they go to receiver boards, okay? And the old style ones, and I've still got some in my show, were a simple receiver where there was a network port in and you hooked up one receiver to one long range port or differential port on your controller. Now these were the good old days where everything was fine, life was fun and good, where you hooked up a long range receiver to the port uh, on the controller and you got four output ports at a long range up to hundreds of feet away or more from your main controller. Now this has some huge benefits because pixel data, the data that comes out of these green terminal blocks or out of uh, this bulkhead on Armados Dragon, okay, that pixel data that's coming out of these, it doesn't like to go far, okay? It's, it's real unhappy about that. It's not designed to go the long distances. Because of that, when you get often above 25 feet, it really, it depends, but when you get over about 25 feet, this is where that data can corrupt and you can have issues, sure. There's ways to hack the system. There's ways around it, often more complicated than it's worth, in my opinion. Okay. And so that's why we have long range receivers uh, for that data. And also because 12 volt or five volt power doesn't travel far before you start losing enough voltage that it will cause problems with your pixels. So it's always best to get your pixel string the start of it plugged in as close to your controller as you can with as short of an extension as possible. It only helps you when you do that. And that's why we ended up with differential receiver boards. Okay. Um, then came the smart receiver and the smart receiver from Falcon uh, worked with the F 48 uh, V three, which is what I have and still use in my show today. And I make that sound like it's like 50 years old. It's not, <laughs> um, but the the Falcon version one smart receivers now allowed you to chain up to three smart receivers from your main controller, such as, uh, you know, this Culp or a Falcon or, you know, these new Matos Draggy controllers that are built with the, the genius inside. OK, now what makes this different and what makes this cool is that if you say, if you follow like my methods uh, of doing Christmas lights, okay, and you say, okay, we're not gonna do any power injection and we run our lights at a low percentage, that means we could go anywhere from about 170 to 300 pixels from each output, from each green terminal block, from each pigtail on our controller, okay? And so if we took an average controller, like we're just gonna take this Culp K8 here, okay? That means I could do eight outputs from this controller plus the two sets of four long range outputs that are available on this particular controller. Okay. And I could hook up strings of up to, again, about 300 pixels, depending on how low percentage wise I run them. Okay. Um, but the thing is, 
if you go to it and you go to the specs for this controller, you find out you can run like a thousand pixels per output, something like that. Okay, that's the processing limitation on this controller is that you can run a lot more pixels per output than that 300. Okay, and so for the built-in outputs where there's power coming through the controller and there's a max amount of power for the controller, a max amount of power on these fuses here, you're really not gonna run more than that 300 pixels because then you're gonna outrun this fuse, you're gonna outrun the amount of power that can go through this controller, you're gonna outrun all of that. Um, it's just not gonna be simple. It's gonna get a lot more complicated for what, in my opinion, is not that much more reward. Enter the smart receivers. Now, you're coming out of this guy right here, this long range port, and you're going to receiver number one, okay? And receiver number one's got its own power supply, its own fuses, it's supplying its own power. It's coming in via this network port. And then you're gonna do, per port, your 300 pixels or what have you, right? And then you can go out of that one to another one. This is a different version, a different model, okay? And so now we're going in, and this is not zoomed in at all, we're going out of the main controller on the long range port and that one data wise from a data perspective can do like a thousand pixels maybe more okay and i'm speaking in generalizations here because the numbers are a little different for all the different controllers right so i can come out of here and i could go okay boom i can do a thousand pixels on each of the four ports that come out of this long range receiver so now i go let's say i go to my first receiver okay this is a falcon receiver version one and i put 200 pixels then I go to a second receiver and I put 200 pixels, a third, I put 200 pixels. Now, instead of just like the 200 pixels that I run direct from a single receiver, I've now tripled that without buying more controller, just more receivers, okay? So the smart receiver, the invention of that and bringing that into this hobby uh, was a really cool thing, okay? It did bring some extra complication and it does bring some extra complication in that um, you have to set either little dip switches, okay, on the controller itself, little switches you put back and forth, or these newer ones have dials, okay? Um, and so that meant you had to say if your receiver was A, B, or C, you had to keep track of that, label it, set it up the same every year, etc. It just added a different level of complexity to the show that I personally didn't want to do, uh, and I often tell people not to do just because it's just more complexity, more numbers, more confusion, more places things can go wrong. I like to keep things simple because it works well, okay? But overall, the V1 smart receivers and A, B, and C receiver boxes works well, um, is predictable, um, and you know, you can do that all day long and it works great. Then the V2 Falcon receivers came out, okay, with the V4 Falcon controllers. I know that gets a little bit confusing, okay? These guys let you do up to six receivers in a chain, six smart receivers in a chain, okay? Meaning you can use every single pixel that your controller could possibly process if you start hooking up lots of smart receivers, okay? And then the chip shortage hit and things got really confusing. Okay, because now basically, depending on which receivers you have and whether you have a Falcon or a Culp, you've now got smart receivers like this one is the smart receiver 2.0 for the Falcon controllers. But then there's an identical looking one that's the smart receiver 2.0 for the Culp controllers. And they look the same, but they've got some different chips on them and they're not interchangeable. And I don't like that because that really confuses people and it makes things really difficult, especially if you're new at this, okay? Um, and so now there's places like wiredwatts.com, I know has it on their receiver page, where there's a complicated, confusing chart that says, okay, if you use this receiver and this controller, here's what you can do, here's how you have to set it, and it's just really darn confusing, okay? And I'm not saying that to be mad, I'm not saying that to be spiteful, I'm not saying that to be... Um, and um, to be not to be unthankful because it's a great innovation to be able to do that but it's gotten really complicated okay and so that's where i do really like in this case the dragon controllers and the genius controllers from experience like same controller same insides okay um, 
because what they do is they do automatic detection of receiver type and I'm pretty sure that they also uh, do automatic uh, place in a line so A, B, and C without you having to set up the switches at least they do with the Experience Lights boards um, with the receiver boards from, from their brand um, I think they also do the place in a line with the other people's brands um, and so that's where again excited for the future like I talk about in a lot of other videos um, if you're new to this that's why I really like that line of controllers except that they need to add a show player which will hopefully come soon um, maybe even before this video comes out who knows um, but when it comes to using smart receivers at the end of the day hopefully your mind isn't too blown now but the thing I want to really point home to and the thing that I really want to send you home with is that smart receivers can be a great way to get the most pixels out of your controller you just have to be really careful that the smart receiver type you have matches what your controller can do and if it can't that uh you're aware of that and you get the right ones right um, and at the end of the day as we look forward to the future i'm excited to see innovations such as the experience lights and the dragon controllers uh the genius and dragon controllers from experience lights because they start to throw a lot of that stuff out throw out a lot of that complication and give you the better technology the ability to do more with the ports that you've got without um, adding in all that extra confusion and so as we move into the future thankfully it's getting less confusing and i hope this video has helped you to understand the basics of these receivers how to set them and most importantly, um, how in the future you can choose the right thing when you're buying your first controllers. With that, guys, if you're brand new to this hobby and you made it this far, congratulations. This one was, you know, kind of techy. But hop over to LaurenChristmasLighting.com. I've got a free guide. I want to pop into your inbox about how to begin with Christmas lighting. You don't want to miss it. And then we will see you guys in our next video. Thanks.